It's been a special week for me, a special weekend, because this weekend we've been celebrating our Impact Masters Commission 10-year reunion and celebration. It's been a ton of fun. If you did not know, for the last 10 years, my wife and I have been privileged to direct Impact Masters Commission, which is a school located right here at First Assembly, uh, dedicated to equipping young adults to living Jesus' command in Matthew 5, 16, to be the light of the world wherever they're called. And we had over the last 10 years just under 100 students come through this program, many of whom are actively impacting the world today for God's glory. And it's really been amazing. We do have several alumni here in the room with us today. I just want you to know how thankful I am that you chose to say yes to God's calling on your life. And my prayer is that you are continuing to say yes to that call every single day. You hold a very special place in my life. Sophie and I value you a lot and we consider all of you family and so I just want you to know how important you are to me and how much we love you uh, personally. During a typical week of Master's Commission we would have a, uh, a chapel, a Master's Commission chapel service where myself or one of our staff could kind of share what the Lord has been downloading into us for our students and as I was preparing this message I kind of felt like I was getting ready for one final chapel. And so if you will indulge me uh, to, to do that with our alumni, as I was unpacking this message, it really, I, I realized that this message is not just for our Master's Commission students, but really was directed straight at me. And uh, I believe that it will impact all of us together. So if you're ready, and if you're not, We'll dive in together this morning. Time is a tricky thing. I brought this hourglass with me today to represent time. See, John Green, he said, one day you're 17 and you're planning for someday. And then quietly, without ever really noticing, someday is today. And then someday is yesterday. And this is your life. This summer, I was driving in a car with my little brother, and we were talking about life. We were talking about my life that has been going through a lot of what feels like really big changes. And I've been asking the Lord a lot of questions about my life. And as we were driving, Kyle looked at me and he said, Nathan, do you know what your opus gloria is? And I looked back at him and I said, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Turns out it's Latin and I barely got through Spanish. <laughs> opus is the Latin word for an artistic work. And gloria can be understood as praise, honor, or the English word glory. So the question that he was asking me when he finally started speaking English again, the question was this, do you know what God has specifically crafted you to do while you're here on this earth that will bring him glory? It's a big question. You know, when we're kids, we're asked the question, what do you, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Someday, kids say things like, I want to be a cooker, or I want to be a firefighter, I want to be a mommy, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a dinosaur, <laughs> if you're a boy, I guess. Sometimes, sometimes they say all kinds of things. This, this week, my, my daughter told my wife, I want to be everything. <laughs> kids get a little older especially in our Christian circles, we start asking the question, what do you feel called to do? And often you get some of the same answers, hopefully minus the dinosaur part. 
And then they sprinkle in some things like, I want to be a youth pastor or a worship leader. I want to be a missionary. And I spent several weeks at our Assemblies of God camps this summer, and I will say that we had reports of dozens of kids and teenagers coming home saying, I feel God is calling me to full-time ministry, like a job format, and, and I think that's absolutely incredible. But every time I go through that process and I, and I hear that from students, I can't help but recognize that there are more people who are not called to be pastors than people who are. So is this calling thing specific to being a pastor or a missionary? Or does it exist for everybody? I researched this Opus Gloria thing quite a bit. And what I found is your Opus Gloria is significantly more than a job that you hold for a season. It's not a title that you have or a role that you hold in an organizational flow chart. Your opus gloria is bigger than that. If it was only a job that you had, then when someone would lose their job for whatever reason, would their purpose go away? No. No, you don't need a job to fulfill your opus gloria. It's simply a part of who you are. And notice I didn't say you wouldn't have to work for it. It might be difficult, but, but you don't need the job to fulfill it. It's who you are. Now, you might be a part of the lucky few who do get paid to do it. And maybe that's you, and that's awesome. But you might not be in that boat. Fulfilling your opus gloria is something that you do without a title, without a paycheck, because it's what God put inside of you. Sophie and I were talking uh, this week, and she said to me something that, that stuck out. She said, I wish instead of asking kids what they wanted to be when they grow up, we would begin to ask them what they want to do. And you could argue that it's simple language or it's semantics, or maybe it's just explaining to the child what we're asking. But, but as a child, you might want to be a police officer some way, someday, because maybe you like the uniform. And it looks cool. And maybe you like the idea of having the really fast car that pulls people over and being in charge. But as an adult, with the understanding of the role and the responsibility that comes with being a police officer, you're probably not signing up because you like the outfit. You're probably signing up because of a passion that's burning deep inside of you. Because of something that you want to do Maybe a, a thought like this, I want to impact my community by keeping it safe, enforcing laws, serving people in need, and bringing justice to a community. That's a purpose. It's more than a uniform. It's a calling. It's deep in you. Now, Nathan, you seem very confident are you sure that everybody has this opus gloria thing? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> if you have your Bible, you can open it to Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll start there. When I was in junior Bible quiz, and yes, I keep saying that because junior Bible quiz changed my life. So if you have elementary kids, you need to look into junior Bible quiz. And if you're looking for a place to serve, you need to look into that process. Listen, when I was in junior Bible quiz, as a young kid, I learned... The verses Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. And they read this. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So we learn in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 that we have been saved by faith, not because of something we do, but why? Well, context. So the why actually comes out in verse 10. Ephesians 2.10, it says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. There it is. God prepared in advance for you to do a specific purpose because you 
are God's handiwork. Now, I don't claim to be a pro, but I do know a little bit about handiwork. I'm no Tyrone Moore. I'm not building kitchens and and all of that. But when it comes to woodwork, I like to do some handiwork. I I call it rough woodwork, right? That's, That's where I'm at. A couple years ago, I decided that I wanted to build myself the perfect patio set on my deck. I did some research and I started on a set of plans. And since then, wouldn't you know it, I've actually built dozens of sets of patio furniture. Being that it's my handiwork, I know all about it. I know that I made it for the specific purpose of people being able to lounge around on in my backyard. That's somebody else's backyard. I put them together so people could sit around outside with family and friends and relax. I didn't build them for kids to climb on. Now, they'll handle kids climbing on them. They're pretty sturdy. But when my kids wanted to climb on something... I used my handiwork to create something specific for them to climb on. So I made them a clubhouse, and it has steps for them to get up high, and it has a slide. It's different from the furniture. It has a different purpose and a different use. The patio furniture I built was not meant to bring shelter to little critters. So when we decided to get some rabbits, I had to build some shelter. I built a very specific hutch that has a roof on top to keep them dry and a wire bottom on on it to uh, let out the droppings. And it, it has walls so that the rabbits can go inside and get away from the bad weather. The couch I built doesn't have any of that. And when I built that couch, those patio sets, I did it with a specific purpose of people being able to sit in lounge, in my backyard. And I knew that purpose before I went to Bernard's to buy the lumber. You know, in the same way, Ephesians tells us that you are God's handiwork. He created you in Christ Jesus for a very specific purpose. He has a specific goal, a unique thing for you to do. And he knew that before he formed you. You have a purpose. You have an opus gloria. I want to look at a couple examples. In scripture, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, Jeremiah's prophecy begins with the Lord calling him. In Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 4, it reads like this. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I don't know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, don't say you're too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Before he was formed in his mother's womb, the Lord had set him apart to be a prophet to the nations, to speak specific instructions for the Lord to a specific group of people. Jeremiah had a specific opus gloria. And not only that, but in verse 8, the Lord promises that in order to fulfill that opus gloria, he will go with him along the way. Praise God, we don't have to do it by ourselves. But man, Nathan, that's Old Testament. That stuff happened way back then. Let me have you turn your Bible to the New Testament. Acts chapter 9. Saul... The highly respected religious leader was on his way to Jerusalem to destroy the followers of the way, followers of Jesus. 
And the Lord meets Saul on his journey, and a bright light shines down on him from the sky, and he falls off his horse, and he can't see anymore, and then he hears this voice that nobody else around him hears. I'm not making this up. It's in your Bible. And I'm going to pick up reading in Acts chapter 9, verse 10. It says this, in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias and the Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, I want you to go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He's been praying there and in a vision, he's seen a man named Ananias come and place hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm that he's done to your holy people here in Jerusalem. And he's come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all those who call on your name. But the Lord said, Ananias, go. This is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles, to their kings, and to the people of Israel. And then he says, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So again, the Lord tells us that he set apart Saul. And get this, Saul is not living his life dedicated to the Lord. He's actually opposed. He's one of these religious leaders, proud and puffed up, but he's not following Jesus. He's on the opposition team. And Jesus, and the Lord says, I've chosen him to be the one who brings my name to the Gentiles and their kings. He will declare my name to the people of Israel and I'll show him how much he must suffer for my name. I have this this thought in my head of Saul, right? And he's like having a vision from the Lord with a big screen uh, and, and he's like watching the shipwrecks and being stoned and boiled in oil and beaten and bruised. This is what I've set you apart for. Sign up. I'm sure that didn't really happen, but, but Saul understood. And we see Saul's name changed to Paul And in his life, he did indeed declare the name of the Lord to the Gentiles, their kings, to the people of Israel, and to you and I today, because he wrote 13 books of the New Testament that we're still reading and they're still impacting our lives. Saul lived his purpose. He found his opus gloria. So I think I've established we all have This God-given opus gloria purpose. But if you're like me, the thinking has just begun. And you might think that you're having a midlife crisis. Because all the questions come flooding in all at the same time. Right? Am I even an adult? What am I going to do when I become an adult? What do I want to be when I grow up? Have I been missing my life's impact for all of my adult life? Am I really making an impact on the world at all? Am I making the impact on the world that I was created to make? Am I using my God-given gifts, talents, and abilities to bring glory to God? Do I have God-given gifts that I've simply covered up? Am Am I wasting them? Do I need to quit my job and change career fields entirely so that I can live this opus glory of passion that's inside of me? Was I at one time fulfilling that opus gloria? And then life circumstances have caused me to not really deal with it or be thinking about it. Or, or maybe, maybe just maybe I know what my purpose is but I'm not really using the glory apart. Like I'm not using my purpose to bring glory to the Lord. I'm just living it for myself. Man, I promise you, when my brother asked me this question, my head started flying. And you can ask my wife, I've spent the last couple of months thinking that I'm having a 33 year old midlife crisis. I'm sure I can't answer all of these questions for you today, but I'm going to take a crack at answering two. One, how do I discover 
my opus gloria, my God-given purpose. And two, what do I do with it? So first, how do I discover my opus gloria? For many years with Master's Commission, students would come to us and they'd come right out of high school and they knew what they wanted to do, oftentimes. Sometimes not, but oftentimes, I want to be a youth pastor, right? I would say that probably 80, 90% of the students that came at some point in time would tell me that they want to be a youth pastor. And usually I'd smile and I'd say, okay, all right, well, we'll wait and see. I just want to see what God does in your life over a course of time. Because often, especially when you're young, you just graduated from some youth ministry and your youth pastor was life changing. I mean, you think your youth pastor hung the moon and the stars because they showed up at your football game because they were present for you. You want to be just like them because they connected you to the Lord. And so obviously, you're going to be a youth pastor. And then, as the year goes on, students would begin to realize, "Mm, maybe I don't love public speaking. Mm, Maybe maybe I don't like late nights, and I'm not a big fan of lock-ins. Or maybe I'm not a big fan of body odor. (laughs) I'm not even sure I like teenagers at all. Um... At least not enough to be with them every day, right? People, you go through that that thought process, but here's what they knew they loved. I love the thought of being someone who can support somebody who's in need. I want to be an ear who can listen to someone who's hurting. And then it sets in, I don't have to be the youth pastor, but I want to help young people who are hurting connect to the God who created them. You know what that sounds like? It sounds like as I, was, as I was making up this fictitious scenario in my head, that sounds like the purpose of Teresa Lance, or Mama T, as our teenagers call her. She's over there right now running our, our Sunday fun day with our junior hires. And listen, for the past decade, she has been passionately helping junior hires who are hurting connect to Jesus because she found a passion inside of her. It's not her job. Her and her husband, they run a business. It's something that she does because she loves it. I've seen this woman go way out of her way to love a teenager who's hurting, comes from a difficult circumstance. Because for Mama T, helping a teenager connect to Jesus is not work. It's a joy. It's her passion. It's her purpose. And to me, it's inspiring. How do I find that for me? How do I live that purpose? How do I figure that out? First, I want to say that there's no substitute for spending time with the Lord and simply asking God to download into your life things that he's created you to do. Ask God to make it evident. There will be no substitute for that. But after you spent time doing that, I was listening to a coach this week online and he was talking about identifying your opus gloria. And and here were my takeaways from his talk. First, what tools do you have? What I mean by that is do you play an instrument? Are you really great with people? Do you love babies? Are you incredibly patient or great with finances? Are you an extremely hard worker? Are you really, really strong? Are you really, really detailed? Something I am not. What tools do you have at your disposal? And then from there, ask yourself, what, when I do these things, what, when do I see the three Fs? And I don't mean failures. When do I see these three F's? Fruit, fulfillment, and feedback. 
So one, fruit. When, when you use that tool or you do that thing, you see a benefit from it that builds yourself, it builds others, it builds the world around you, it creates something. You see a response. There's fruit from that thing. Second, fulfillment. Maybe you worked 50 hours this week and then you came home from work and all weekend long you did that thing that you were passionate with, with all your heart and you are exhausted and you lay your head down on Saturday night on the pillow and you're just like, I am shot, but it was a great day because I got to do the thing that fills me. I got to touch people around me and fill that tank. I have so much joy, even though I'm tired, because I got to do the thing, the thing that I love. And then feedback. When you do that thing, people around you notice. They might even compliment it. They appreciate it. They often recognize, man, You're just in your sweet spot. God created you to live that. And I just want to encourage you. I want to say thanks for impacting my life in that way. What things do you receive those three F's from? Fruit, fulfillment, and feedback. And then take that information. Go back to praying about it. And begin to ask the Lord to bring clarity for you. Listen, it doesn't mean that there will never be change or shift Things can be added, things can be taken away. I'm willing to bet that you will find so much personal fulfillment if you find yourself determining what you want to do or be involved with in your life based on an understanding of your specific God-given purpose. Here's a pro tip. There are all kinds of personality tests out there that you could jump online and look at. But if you call First Assembly home, I want to encourage you to take us up on our continued encouragement to go to Growth Track, right? In Growth Track, this is really built into the whole process this concept of discovering your purpose. The concept of learning who you are and how you can use your gifts, your talents, the masterpiece that God made you to impact the world around you. Our team's going to walk you through those assessments and and bring you through a consultation that will help you discover what God's placed inside of you. Listen, church, next week, second service, go to Growth Track. Start the process. Let it shift who you are. Then once I've figured out that purpose, question number two, what do I do with it? I want to read a passage of scripture that I would consider to be my life's verse. It's the passage that we founded Impact Masters Commission on 23 years ago. And if you're an alumni in this room, don't roll your eyes at me. I know you've heard me read this to you a hundred times. But I want you to know that I pause in my life and I go back to this and I wanna encourage you to pause in your life and go back to this on a regular basis. Because I think it's important. It's important that we ask ourselves if we're living this purpose out. If you've discovered your unique mandate and purpose, then this becomes really necessary. Matthew chapter five, verse 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, again, if you stop doing that thing that you were made for, how can it become salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out, trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden and neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl, because that would be silly. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, 
that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Listen, it doesn't matter how young or how old you are. There's only so much time left. And God has given you a gift. It's a unique to you gift. He didn't give it to you so you can put it under a bowl. He placed that gift inside of you so that you can live your opus gloria and be a unique masterpiece that brings glory and honor to him. Several years back, we coined the tagline, discover your impact. And yes, it's a play on words, right? Impact Masters Commission, discover your impact. But the thing I like about it is that you can discover your purpose and not do anything with it. You can discover your purpose and just sit on it. But once you discover the impact that you get to have on the world around you through your God-given purpose, you will be so charged up to live your purpose that you're ready to take the world by storm. So let me go back to that quote that I started with by John Green. One day, you're 17, and you're planning for someday, and then quietly, without ever really noticing it, someday is today, and then someday is yesterday, and this is your life. Or maybe... You prefer the words of Andy Bernard, who iconically said, I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. If you're here and you're thinking, it's too late. My prime to accomplish the passion that I have or that I once had, it's too late. I want you to know that it's not too late. Because if there's air in your lungs, there's still time to live your purpose. There's still time to live your purpose. Maybe years ago you found yourself as a student of Impact Masters Commission or Bible College or you went to IU or Purdue and you graduated and you were ready to take on the world. And then life happened. You found yourself falling in love and and getting married or getting a job, a job that you just got because you needed to pay the bills because you're getting married and you got to do that. Maybe the whole time you've been living for the Lord, maybe there's been seasons where it's been stronger, you've slipped away. I don't know, maybe you're looking back at your life and you're thinking, things are different now. Yeah. Yeah. Things are different now. That's that's a reality. Things are different now. But it's not too late. I want you to know that you haven't missed it. But I, I want you to know that you haven't gone too far away from the Lord. I also want you to know that time is short. Time is short. So what are you gonna do with it? I want you to, Take this moment and choose to let it be a reminder to live your opus gloria each and every day. To live your purpose. Church family, if you need a place to use your gifts, I want you to go to Growth Track and I want you to jump on the dream team and I want you to use what God's put inside of you. Man, we say that all the time, but there's just something that happens when we get to use what God's given us. We need you. Man, Master's Commission alumni, I want you to use your purpose. I want you to do what God's called you to do. It's not too late. Wherever you're at in life, whatever you've been walking through, I want to challenge you. Time is short. Live your opus gloria. 
Let your light shine before the people around you. That God would be glorified through you. It's not too late to live your impact on the world. Live it loud. Live it strong. Change the world. Because that's what God made you to do.